Hello there, my name is MKIC Master. I'm also known as Carter Freak. I'm here today to show you a little bit about the tool Make. Now, Make is a tool that can be used to edit tracks in Super Mario Kart, as you probably already know if you're watching this video. Um, I'm going to be making a series of videos showing how this tool can be used to make various different tracks and how to get everything to work properly and how to use it efficiently. Now, when you first open up Make and you have everything set up, you'll be introduced to this screen here. Um, the very first screen that you run into is your tile set screen. The tile set screen can be used to change your tile set from Mario Circuit to Donut Plains, Choco Island to Vanilla Lake, Koopa Beach, Bowser Castle, Rainbow Road, Ghost Valley, etc. Um, this is very very useful for people that want to follow the original Super Mario Kart's um, track layout or they want to have their own you know, something other than Mario Circuit. Um, just press RRT and it'll go over the next one there. So the second thing you can do in your F1 menu, which is the one you are currently in when you open up Make, is press the space key and that'll bring you to your starting positions. Your starting positions can be used to basically tell the game where you're gonna start. Now, there's only one way that you actually start and that is going upward. Basically, if you put this finish line down, they're not going to go this way, they're not going to go that way, you can't reverse it or anything like that, they can only go upward. Just keep that in mind when you're making your tracks. Now, you can make a bunch of different tracks, like you can have, say, two finish lines and have tracks going separate sides like that if you want it or anything like that. You can use this however you want to. The next thing you can use in a tool make is the basically the editing menu. You get to the editing menu by pressing the F2 key. When you press the F2 key there's four different options you can go to in the editing menu. There is the manual tile placement which is one of four. It's the first one that loads up when you press F2. There's the Bezier curve menu um, which basically you can use to make different turns. I don't personally recommend using it because it's kind of a tricky tool to use and there's better ways of making turns than this tool anyway third tool that you can get in the editing menu is the automated tile placement. This is a very, very useful menu that you'll be using in the editing tool so that you can basically add a lot of graphics to your hack without having to do very much work. I will show you how to use this in a bit more um, detail later on, so let's just not worry about this for now and continue on. The fourth menu in the editing track men or editing track section is the Grand Prix mode object placement. You'll be using this after you've finished designing your tracks to place your items and your coins and everything like that. Um, do not worry about this until after you design the track because basically it's a waste of time and you'll probably end up putting your items in different places anyway. Um, useful thing about this as well is that it makes it so items only appear in Grand Prix mode and match race mode instead of in time trial mode which a lot of people seem to have noticed probably from amateur hacks that if you don't do it that way then you have items in time trial mode which is kind of not cool. Okay, so the third menu we can go to is our zones menu. Now the zones menu is very very useful because this is where you're going to be doing all of your AI editing. The very first one that loads when you press F3 is in the zones menu is the placement. Now placement is used for basically placing where you want all of your AI zones to be. I'll explain this in a bit more detail later on. Your destination points are where the AI are going to follow or where they're going to try and go to um, from the zone they're in. As you can see I'm just kind of um, dragging these uh, pointers out to the other zones just to show you how this works. Now basically let's say I had made a track here and it was a square shaped track. If I have all the pointers like this the AI when I press tab is going to follow all of these arrows. They will only follow these arrows when they're in this zone. Basically they're going to try and follow this point here. This is very, very useful for making the AI follow your tracks 
and not have to worry about designing your tracks around the original tracks design. You can make entirely new tracks with this, so there's no limitations on what you can or cannot do in terms of track design. The third thing you can do in the zones editing is your lap indicator. When you press F, you'll or sorry, press and hold F, you'll see a little purple line or a pink line show up there. This is where the actual lap is going to be counted. The second thing that's important about this menu is by clicking and dragging, you'll see a little white box show up here. You must drive around this box in order for it to count a lap. If I, for example, put this box all the way across the screen like this, there's no way to count a lap because you have not crossed this. So even if you go all the way around say the track here, it's not going to count the lap. The fourth thing that you're going to be getting into with this tool, when you press F4, you go to the objects menu. The objects menu requires you to have set your zones before you go into the objects menu in order for it to work properly. So I will be going into details about the zones menu before I go into de uh, extreme detail about the objects menu. The objects menu is useful because you can set um, where you want your pipes and Mario, or Mario circuit to be placed or your moles and donuts planes to be placed and things like that. Um, there's just as a note, um, Super Mario Kart has a limitation of four pipes in a single area. Um, so there can only be four of these on the screen at any one time. Um, as you'll see, I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. Those are the first four pipes that you'll see. Um, more detail about on that a little bit later. You can drag more out here, as you see, and they're going to be um, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. Those are the second set of pipes, and again, more, te more detail later on. The second menu you can go into in your objects menu is the visibility menu. This is important because it allows you to decide which four pipes are going to be seen at any one time. Right now, I've got FF across the board. That in Hex is basically 255 or 256. I, I'm kind of lazy right now and not counting math. Um, other than that, basically, if I set this to 2, it's going to go to the se second object zone. So you are going to be able to see these pipes as long as you are in these zones. So if you're in this zone here or this zone here, you'll be able to see the pipes in this zone. Now, if I set the second one here, which is for the second set of pipes, you will be able to see these pipes as long as you're in any of these three zones. It does not apply to these two zones, even though it's included in two. Now, for the, fourth me or the final menu that's in the objects menu, it's your behavior menu. Normally, you're not going to be changing this, but the way it works is your default behavior, as you can see, is minus one which means that if I'm on a Mario Circuit tile set, it's going to be the pipes. I can change this to be different things like thwomps or fish or things like that, but it generally is kind of glitchy, so I recommend you just leave it as the default behavior. This concludes the basics tutorial for Make. I will be going into more detail about the editing menu in the next section.